International Life is pleased to welcome Lesin Hadeb, the Minister of Tourism for Morocco. It seems to me from my recent visits to Morocco that tourism is booming. How many visitors a year does it attract? Well, in 2011, we attracted something like 9.7 million tourists. So we have been growing for the last 10 years, which is good, uh, good news. And this year, we are, uh, I mean, like, we are attracting the same number of tourists. Unfortunately, it's not going to grow as much as we wanted it to be, I mean, like, uh, uh, in the, this year, but that's because of uh, all the financial problems that exist within our partners, among our partners in Europe, but also because of the Arab Spring and a lot of uh, mixed up ideas that a lot of people have about Morocco in relation to the other countries. So I'm here in order to dissipate that kind of image and also in order to promote people to come to Morocco. But we, we are confident that in 2013 we are going to grow more and attract more people. So what's the tour industry plan for the next 10 years? Our plan for the next 10 years is actually to double the number of tourists. We want to reach something like 18 million tourists. We want to double the bed capacity that we have in our hotels and then probably create something like 200,000 more beds in, uh, in, uh, in our hotels. And uh, number three is to uh, invest more in tourism and attract more investors uh, in tourism. And in doing that, how we are going to reach that is by diversifying our culture offer in the sense that we are mostly focused on Marrakesh and some imperial cities who want to have more destinations that are cultural and we think that we have about four destinations that are we are developing in order to, 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 to compete with Marrakesh. We also want to develop our seaside and uh, sea resorts uh, to such uh, a point that we can be competitive also in the Mediterranean and we develop also like our nature and our ecology kind of offer so that people can come also for the beauty of Morocco, for the landscape and all of that. So we want to diversify the offer, we want also to create and, and, and invest in a lot of niches like golf, like uh, sports tourism, like business tourism, which are also very important. So I think by diversifying, by having more offer, by creating new destinations, by investing in the sea, by investing in more in culture, in nature as well, and also looking at different niches, we can, we can reach like to 20 million uh, people by the year 2020. And by doing that, we're going to make Morocco one of the top 20 destinations in the world. That's our vision. And I want to make it also reference in terms of sustainable tourism in the Mediterranean and we're working on that. So our development is very rigorous in terms of sustainability and we want to continue doing that. We don't want to damage our, our beaches, we don't, damage, we don't want to damage our, our deserts, we don't want to damage our mountains. We want people to benefit from those and we want also not to have very negative impacts on the ecosystem as we are doing our tourism strategy. What is being done to develop the luxury market? The luxury market is a very important market for us because of the added value and we have, uh, we have uh, that's one of the markets that we really encourage. So we are trying to attract like all the big chains uh, of hotels, uh, so the Four Seasons of the World, the Marriott's, the, the Hilton's, the Overroy's, the, the, the Ritz-Carlton, we are having like two Ritz-Carlton's. Uh, being built in Morocco, two four seasons being built in Morocco. Hilton is back, we are doing like two hotels with Hilton. We have Oberoi doing a hotel in, uh, in Morocco. Banin Tree is also interested and they are also building one in the region of Tetuan in north of Morocco. So uh, Delano, uh, which is of the Morgans group, is also established in Morocco. They have one hotel in Miami and now they are investing in a hotel in Marrakesh, I mean with a group, with a local group and also with a Spanish group. So all of these means that, that Morocco is becoming a luxury destination in terms of hotels and Marrakesh is becoming that kind of luxurious uh, uh, destination with a little bit of play by Casablanca and also by the North in Tetuan. But we think that, that luxury is very important for us. It's not only about hotels, it's also about brands. So a lot of brands also following the hotels 
and the, the Louis Vuittons of this world and the Hermes and all of that are very interested in, in Marrakesh. There has been two summits of luxury like recently in Marrakesh. I attended those and there is a huge interest in a lot of people being established. We're working also with a lot of the travel agents who are specialized in the luxury uh, market in, uh, in North America and Europe and we're working with them so that we can attract more uh, more tourists who can use the beauty of uh, the hotels and the riads and the uh, castles that we have in Morocco, that we offer in Morocco and also uh, take uh, advantage of a lot of the services, a lot of the brands that are being developed around in, in Morocco and we'll continue doing that so the, the tourism the luxury tourism segment is a pillar of Moroccan tourism and that's what distinguishes Morocco from other destinations around the Mediterranean. I found the quality of the food there to be superb. It is, it is very interesting and the reason why Morocco has one of the best cuisines in the world is because of the mixture of, of, of sources of that kind of cuisine. You know uh, that uh, a good part of it is Jewish. Morocco has, uh, has 2,000 Jewish existence in Morocco. They have coexisted with the Muslims in, in uh, Morocco up until the 50s and 60s. Some of them are still there. They were protected by King Mohammed V from being prosecuted and persecuted by the Nazis. And that's why all of them remember that. That was in 1943 when he didn't uh, sign the decree that was issued by the French Vichy regime, I mean, by making all the Jews were the Star of David. So that's 10% of the population. They remember that. And, and so that Jewish existence has influenced a lot of the food in Morocco, but also what influenced that as well is the Islamic influence, which came in the 8th century, but also the Berber, Amaziri, local influence is very, very important in that sense. And all of that got mixed with the Andalusian cuisine, which was developed over the centuries between the 8th century and the 14th century in Andalusia when, this, when the Muslims and the Jews were kicked out of Spain after the fall of Spain in the hands of the, of the Catholic kings then a lot of those people came back to Morocco, Jews and Muslims but they brought with them their architecture, their know-how but especially their cuisine so their tagines, their couscous, the meshwis, the salads all of those kinds of really nice and choicy kind of, of cuisine is back there and we're glad that a lot of Moroccans love that and love to share that with a lot of tourists and I think tourists who come to Morocco enjoy that and it's very healthy, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's tasty but healthy I mean and, and, uh, and we are proud that that's a millennial tradition that is being kept going for a long time so at the same time that in 10th century uh, a Jewish woman or a Muslim woman in Fez was making couscous is the same thing that a woman woman now in 21st century is making couscous while her son is looking at the internet so it's just the same kind of tradition being kept and I think that's what Morocco offers is a millennial tradition at the same time as a very good and modern look in the future so what other political changes have been made in the last few years to further Morocco's development? Well, you know, Morocco has seen so many reforms in the recent times and since the coming of Mohammed VI, the king of Morocco in 1999, there has been sweeping reforms, both on the political level and the human rights issues, with regard to the past, with regard to economics, and with regard to culture as well. So all of these reforms were avant-garde reforms when you compare them to what was happening in the Arab world. That's why when the Arab Spring came, Moroccans were not shocked. I mean, when there were demands on the street for change, that was like a breeze that we knew, that was something that we knew, that was not like, I mean, like shocking news, as it happened in other countries where it resulted in clashes and violence. Unfortunately, in Morocco, a lot of the elite and the middle class and the public opinion embraced those kinds of, of, of changes. And even the king and the, and the political parties also embraced change. And so all of that created a wide alliance for reform and for change. And Morocco voted the new constitution last year. That constitution involved a lot of powers from the king towards the prime minister and also from the government towards the parliament and made the separation between the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary branches. So now I'm a member of government and I know that, for example, within government we have very, very important powers, unlike in the past. And the king is playing more of the role of an arbitrator in the political scene and less of an effective kind of ruler. And the second thing is that 
we are very accountable in front of the Parliament. The Parliament is grilling us with questions on a, on a weekly basis and the Prime Minister comes every month in front of Parliament, both chambers in order to account for the policies that the government is adopting. And we have a judiciary system that is independent now and that prosecutes in all kinds of cases. So we are becoming a better governed, governed kind of country country that is democratizing every day, we have a very independent, sometimes even like very difficult to press, and we are proud of the fact that the press is also very, and we have a vibrant civil society that has been developing for the last 20 years or so, so we have all the ingredients to become a democratic country. We are going in that kind of direction, and I think we can get there very, very soon. So what's being done to attract businesses tomorrow? What we are trying to do is we are, we are a business friendly kind of environment, we are investment, we are investors friendly. So we, we, we go around and, and, and bring investors to Morocco. We have like all kinds of incentives from providing real estate, from providing tax breaks, uh, from providing also like government uh, helping with the, the management and, and the, the, the development of the sites for different kinds of uh, of, uh, of uh, sectors, and that's why, although there is the crisis, Morocco has not has been Morocco has been ranked as the first country in the Arab world to attract investment, despite the fact that there was the Arab Spring and and, and revolutions and the financial crisis. Just uh, the first months of this year, I have uh, signed contracts for something like close to a billion dollars. Of, of investment and we are seeing more of that happening. Last year we have like billion and a half dollars over, I mean like in 2011 despite the crisis. So I think we have a good business environment. We are improving on that, it's not perfect, but there are, there are, there are small problems we are dealing with. And we have also a government who is proactive about helping investors and bringing investors. For example, in the tourism industry, we provide investment investors with real estate, we provide them with land where to do their projects, we do the business plan for them, we help them like find, I mean, clear the way for, with red tape and administration, find like banks and all of that, and we help them, I mean, like set up their kind of projects. So that's the kind of work we do. So we're very proactive with investments, we are very business friendly, we try to attract them, we go around the world in order to attract them. We think that Morocco is, is a good destination now for investment, especially that other countries are facing serious problems. A lot of investors are coming to Morocco because they think that Morocco is a safe place to invest in. Last question, what is unique about Morocco? What is unique about Morocco is the only country in the world that combines beauty with generosity, with the millennial tradition, with an openness to the world, and the democracy that is being built. A very, very important. It's, the, it's one of the emergent markets in the world that kind of combines all of those. If you go to Morocco, you'll find a beautiful country, you'll find very generous people, you'll find hospitality, you'll find also a millennial culture, which is like, it has a lot of ingredients. It's a multicultural kind of society, and people are very proud of that, and they can tell you stories that happened two centuries ago, three centuries ago, four centuries ago, but at the same time, it's an open country. It's a country that speaks all kinds of languages in the world. Go to Marrakesh, you'll find like young people speaking Japanese and speaking Chinese with the tourists. And also, it's a country that embraces technology. It's one of the first countries in, in, in Africa that uses the internet, and uses Facebook, and uses Twitter and all of that. It's open to the world. I mean, like, it's permeable to all kinds of ideas that come from around the world. It's open to what is happening. It's within globalization at the same time that it keeps its tradition vibrant and going. And that's what it offers when tourists come. They offer them medinas, which are museums, but they're living museums. They're not musified somewhere. It's, it's there, it's living. But they offer them also like a look to the future. I mean, the vision of the future, where we want to go. That's what you'll find in Morocco. On behalf of International Life, thank you very much. Very welcome.